Hey there, everybody. You know, that reminds me all the times my mom called me in the barn and she'd say, Daniel, hey, it's for horses. And I'd say, oh, I'm sorry, mom, it's the last straw. And we'd share a laugh. But you know, all this horse talk's got me thinking. Do you remember mathematical induction? It's that sexy math fact that allows you to prove a claim about infinitely many things that build off each other. We made a whole video about it here. Somewhere. The point is, the fact that horses can sleep standing up, something I can't do without my special bed, is not nearly the craziest thing about horses. Even crazier? We can actually use mathematical induction to prove that all horses are the same color. Like, for real? So to start off, let's do a quick review of mathematical induction. Let's say we're trying to prove a claim is true on the natural numbers. You know, the one, two, three, four, that whole boy band. Instead of trying to prove the claim is true for each natural number individually, or prove it's true for all of them at once, we can use this handy proof technique we've been calling mathematical induction. And that goes something like this. We first prove the claim is true for 1. That'll be our base case. Then next we prove that if the claim is true for n, then it'll be true for n plus 1 as well. We call that little rascal the inductive step. When we put these two together, we can prove the claim is true for all natural numbers. That's because if the base case holds, we've anchored the claim for 1 to the truth. And the inductive step gets us from 1 to proving it's true for 2, 3, 4, 5, on and on like that. Therefore, the claim must be true for all natural numbers. When we put it like that, it really makes you think why it took us 18 minutes to explain that before. But, uh, pride? Probably pride. Let's go with pride. And that's actually convenient, because a pride is exactly what I want to talk about today. Specifically, a pride of horses. Now I know, I know, I know, I know that technically a group of horses is called a harris or harass or her race? I don't really know any of these crazy things. But we all know that Marion Webster really phoned it in on the H's. No one in the entire world says that Chapter H is their favorite part of that book. So instead, let's just make up our own thing called the more exciting Pride of Horses. And now I want to introduce you to a bold hypothesis. All horses are the same color. Sounds insane, I know. Insane respect insane. But hear me out. I think we can actually use this mathematical induction we just talked about to prove this fact. And the way we'll go about it is by showing that if any pride of horses of any particular size is monochromatic, then if we scale that up, that means that the global pride of horses must all be the same color. And the proof goes something like this. Remember, to use mathematical induction, we first must prove the base case, which in this case just says that every pride of one horse must be monochromatic, which I think we can all agree is true. If you take any group of one horse, then Every horse in that group must be the same color, mainly the color of that one horse. So the base case is totally true, meaning all we have left to complete this crazy proof is to show the inductive step, which in this case just says that for any number n, if any pride of n horses is monochromatic, then we must also have that any pride of n plus 1 horses is monochromatic. All right, so this is the harder part. Buckle up. Unless you're in a car, in which case, what are you doing not buckle? And also, wait, why are you watching a math video? So let's say the claim is true for n, aka we're assuming that every pride of n horses is monochromatic. From this, we want to show that every pride of n plus 1 horses must also be monochromatic. Now consider a pride of n plus 1 horses. Notice that in this n plus 1 size group, we can subgroup the horses into n size groups in multiple different ways. Here's just two, group A and group B. And here's the interesting thing to note. If every pride of n horses truly is monochromatic, then this first n size group, group A, must all be the same color. Now let's shift our focus to group B. Again, if we're assuming that every pride of n horses is monochromatic, then every horse in this group must be the same color. But notice that fundamentally, these two groups of horses must share members. I mean, it's pretty hard to split an n plus 1 size group into two distinct n size groups, right? So since we know this n size pride of horses is monochromatic, and we know it has some red horses, every horse in this group must be red. And if we zoom out, that means that every horse in this n plus 1 size group of horses is red. The pride is monochromatic. Therefore, by the inductive step, every pride of two horses is monochromatic, which then leads to every pride of three horses being monochromatic, meaning every pride of four is monochromatic, on and on and on and on and on like that. Every pride of horses must be monochromatic. Or to the hay person, all horses are the same color. Come on, people! So we may have reached an impasse. Because on the one hand, we did just show using mathematical induction that all horses are the same color. And mathematical induction is a very solid, very sound mathematical fact. All mathematicians for hundreds of years agree that it works. So unless horses are the one magical thing that breaks math, 
then we have to conclude that all horses are the same color. But on the other hand, that's pretty damning. I mean, it could be doctored or vetted, I guess, but it really looks like in the real world, all horses aren't the same color. So we need to come to a decision. Do we believe math? The purest, coolest, hippest subject around, the love of my life? Or do we believe just these observations? And if we say we trust our eyes, well, firstly, how do you spend the time I watched a guy saw this distance in half? But secondly, and more importantly, what went wrong with our induction proof? Does induction just not work? Or is it the way we did our proof? Or, oh God, was it, was it me? No, no, you can't blame yourself. You really thought he was a magician. Go ahead and pause the video now if you want some time to think about what's going on here. Comment below what you think the issue is. Thankfully, we don't actually have to pick between our eyes and math. It turns out that induction is a totally valid proof technique and not all horses are the same color. These two facts can coexist. The resolution coming from that we were actually pretty sloppy with our induction proof. And I wish I could get the blame for this, but it's actually not my idea. This is a really famous logical paradox. And the hole in our logic comes from the inductive step. See, the inductive step we claim to have proved that if every group of n horses is truly monochromatic, then every group of n plus one horses must also be monochromatic. And we do this using a very nice, very elegant proof involving splitting the n plus one size group into two n groups and showing they must overlap, yada, yada, yada. But hold up. Let's run the logic back in slow motion. Let's just try to show that if every one horse pride is monochromatic, then every two horse pride must be monochromatic. I mean, that's the simplest case we could find. Now let's consider any old pride of two horses. Now, just like before, we can find multiple one-horse subgroups inside this larger group. But do you see the problem? They don't overlap. When we only have a two-horse pride, we can't guarantee that these two subgroups will share members. So even though they're both monochromatic subgroups, the larger group as a whole might not be monochromatic. One group could be red and one could be blue, for example. Our logic breaks down going from one to two. And this, like my anarchist tattoo, is subtle. It is true that every one horse pride is monochromatic. And it's even true that this overlapping logic can get us from two horse prides to three horse prides, three to four, four to five, etc. But the logic can never get us from one to two. So our entire logic chain breaks down and crumbles into dust like a PG-13 genocide. I don't feel so good. And there we go, everyone. That's our follow-up on induction. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And let us know what you want to see next. If you want to see more of this induction stuff, although I think we've kind of beat a dead horse, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, that's enough. Enough of the horse puns. Bye. <laughs>